Hi everyone, welcome back to Quantify Your Career. So in the last video, we talked about what is quantitative finance and what are the different job roles of a quant. And we also saw how it is based on four pillars or subjects, which are mathematics, statistics, programming and finance. So let's get a little deeper into what each of those four pillars entails. So in this video, let's look at what are the required skills to get into the field of quantitative finance and those skills can be developed further over time. So let's divide the skill set into six categories, math and stats, programming, finance, data science, and two of these skills, which I feel are really important for quant professionals to develop. One is problem solving and the other is soft skills. Now going further into mathematics and statistics, some of the concepts used by quants are linear algebra. For example, this is one of the most important concepts used by quant professionals. So in linear algebra, for example, the knowledge of matrices and vectors is crucial for portfolio optimization and solving systems of equations in finance. Then calculus and differential equations, for example, um, the stochastic differential equations can be used to value financial derivatives, price those derivatives, model interest rates, and also risk management. Numerical methods like Monte Carlo simulations, they can be used to approximate solutions for complex models. Probability and statistics, of course, it is used for understanding random processes and distributions and statistical inferences. And this can be used for risk modeling or forecasting. And lastly, optimization. This can be used to find best solutions like minimizing risk in portfolios. This is definitely not an exhaustive list, but some of the most important concepts used in mathematics and statistics. Now going further into programming, programming entails so many uh, different languages used by quants. Uh, these are some of the most important languages used in programming. Python definitely is used for data analysis and uh, implementing for implementing those models. And libraries like NumPy uh, and Pandas can be used for data manipulation. C++ is definitely uh, helpful to increase the speed and efficiency of your of programming and uh, implement quant complex quant models. And this is uh, generally used in high frequency trading firms. R is a very important language for statistical analysis and also visualization. MATLAB is also still used in, uh, in some places for quant modeling and simulations. MATLAB also has a lot of mathematical capabilities and ease of prototyping. So it is still used widely in quant forms. SQL, uh, that is a very uh, basic database language. It is used for uh, extracting financial data from database, data sets. And similarly, Q and KDB, they are used mainly by the trading desks, uh, similar to SQL, but faster querying of financial data from huge data sets. Further going into data science. Now data science, of course, is a, is a field or industry in itself, but it is definitely an integral part of quant finance, where they use data science concepts to find patterns in financial data and build models on top of it. So for example, data, pre-processing and cleaning, which is a very crucial first step in model development. Uh, it can be used to clean and normalize and process financial data, especially, uh, especially the time series data. And this ensures accuracy in modeling and forecasting. Now, ML algorithms, definitely application of algorithms like regression, decision trees, neural networks, this is, all these algorithms are mainly used for predictive modeling and identifying patterns in the markets, in financial data. Time series analysis, of course, models like Arch and Garch, which I will explain in further videos. This can be definitely used to forecast stock prices, volatility, and economic indicators. And again, these are some of the main examples I can think of, but the scope is huge. Backtesting and strategy development, uh, this is used to, uh, to test trading strategies which have been developed on the data 
which is already available. So if using historic data, you can test your strategy. That's back testing. So this validates the performance of the strategy. Going further into finance, of course, financial uh, the knowledge of financial instruments, uh, that is different asset classes, equities and bonds and derivatives. No, basic knowledge of these is definitely a plus. Markets, so markets macro and microstructure, of course, if you have knowledge of the markets, you can manage portfolios and um, handle trading decisions better. Risk management, like I had mentioned earlier, risk management came into light, especially after the weight crisis. And porn professionals are now getting better at predicting volatility and risk in uh, portfolios and in markets. Portfolio theory, of course, concepts related to portfolios like CAPM, uh, all of these are very important to get a deeper understanding in making financial decisions. Quants use a lot of mathematics and statistics to value a, a derivative product. So basic knowledge of how these derivatives like options and futures are calculated, this is very important. Behavioral finance was actually one of the subjects in my master's program. It is definitely very useful uh, to handle portfolio management, which is not on the not much on the quant side, but it is really essential to know. Now, problem solving uh, has a lot of different skills within itself. For example, logical thinking, that is the ability to approach problems systematically. So identifying like patterns and how uh, and drawing connections uh, within the data. Uh, all of these skills are very useful in solving brain teaser questions and then even real life problems within the quant world. So for example, breaking down a puzzle or uh, brain teaser question into smaller steps and then using deductive reasoning. Now critical thinking is a very important skill. It is used for analyzing and evaluating like different aspects of the problem, considering various perspectives and also questioning assumptions. So for example, evaluating the conditions of the problem and figuring out what is relevant and what is not, what is a distraction. Creative thinking is like thinking outside the box. So for example, approaching a classic puzzle, uh, of course it requires logical and critical thinking, but also going beyond the conventional boundaries to think of creative solutions. Attention to detail, very closely examining all the elements of a problem. Pattern recognition. This is definitely the most important skill in quant finance where you, you need to identify trends and repetitions in, the, in financial data. Lastly, soft skills. Communication is definitely the the number one skill in quant finance because usually quants end up building complex financial models but they also have to communicate the same complex model to a non-techie or a strategy role for example the, the ability to translate a complex financial model in layman terms is an important skill for a quant to have networking for sure networking events workshops and conferences all of these provide huge opportunities to learn about new technologies and tools and methodology. Apart from your career development, networking in terms of quant and building models and adapting new technology, attending networking events definitely plays a big role. This Now, collaboration and teamwork, this is true for any industry, um, but also, of course, working working with other quants, the sales teams, the developers, the product managers, traders. This definitely helps quant succeed. Of course, adaptability and con continuous learning is important to adapt to new technology and incorporating it within model development helps. Patience and persistence is definitely one of the most underrated skills of a quant, I believe. Especially in a research role, you need to, you need to keep trying different solutions, and sometimes the, you need to undo what you have already done and spend so much time doing it. So you need to have patience and persistence both 
to see your solution go through. So these are the most important skills I feel uh, for getting into quant finance and also remaining in the field and developing these skills over time when you are already practicing quant. Now, how to acquire these skills on a very broad level? I identified like six broad resources. One is definitely degree programs like Masters in Financial Engineering, Operations Research, MS in Quant Finance. It's named very differently in different universities, but definitely will help gain uh, a lot of those skills which I just mentioned. Of course, I've mentioned master's programs here, but quants are, a lot of quants have already gotten a PhD, maybe in mathematics or statistics. And you don't need to get a master's in uh, financial engineering, for example, even a bachelor's degree in statistics, math, or, or all of these undergrad courses can also help you become a quant. So online courses, there are so many courses on linear algebra, for example, on Coursera, Udemy and MIT open course where you can acquire knowledge of these concepts in those online courses. Certifications like CQF and FRM, which is risk management, CFA, will give you a lot of these skills. So what I observed is getting these skills, which I mentioned earlier, from different resources and combining the knowledge would help you succeed. You don't need to go to one place to acquire, acquire all these skills. You can distribute your uh, resources. Definitely books will help you um, gain the most amount of knowledge, like Gilbert Strang's Linear Algebra, Fabozzi's Fixed Income, uh, The Handbook of Fixed Income. It will help you understand these concepts better. Life projects uh, or hands-on practical projects are the best way to learn anything, I feel because you need to first state a problem, find a solution, implement the solution, and then test your strategy. So for example, in price prediction, we are building a price prediction model, and then building a back testing framework to test your strategy. This will, this will teach you a lot of those skills. And I'll try to cover these in some of the other videos. Research papers, for example, machine learning and asset pricing or financial risk management related papers, just reading those papers and replicating those papers will, will give you an edge to acquire these skills and showcase your skills. So I hope these skills divided in broad categories and the concepts within these skills were helpful for you to understand what is entailed within quantitative finance and what is required to develop a career in this field. I will be covering a lot of these concepts going further through the YouTube channel and through our LinkedIn page. For example, look out for our extensive coverage of KDB and Q on, uh, uh, through our LinkedIn posts. And the link is in the description. I'll also keep sharing resources uh, to develop these skills through the channel and on LinkedIn. Until next time.